Shalom Church, welcome to Chosen Treasure. My name is Benjamin Daniel. It's so nice to have the brothers and sisters in the body of Christ this day tuning into our channel. I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's having a blessed week so far in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So today I wanted to do a quick review, a book review. I haven't done book reviews for quite a long time. Uh, when my wife and I started this online ministry channel, one of the first videos that we put up was a book review. And that was a couple of years ago. So today I wanted to just talk about this amazing, beautiful Bible guide that we received, uh, I think about a month and a half ago. I haven't really talked much about it. And, and there are not many videos right here on YouTube about it. So I wanted to give you my take on this amazing Bible guide we are. So now this one is called, and I'm trying to get a proper camera angle here. So I hope you can see this. It's called The Complete Guide to the Bible. And the author is Stephen Stephen M. Miller and over here it says it's an illustrated easy to follow reference guide covering both the Old and the New Testament and it has a book by book background and explanations and fascinating details on Bible times over here and striking artwork and photography helpful cross reference and indexes that's right so on the back of the book it's the complete guide it is not the word of God it's a guide to the Bible so it has artwork it has uh, paintings it ha has maps and it has some um, photographs over here and in inside you find detailed explanation of all 66 bible books plus the upper Kripa. it has intriguing sidebars and unique confusing or bizarre aspects of scripture yeah there's a lot of that over there beautiful design with 300 photos illustrations and maps and helpful cross references and indexes so that's how it looks. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. I just wanted to get a wide angle shot of this over here. And this is how it looks. Now, you're going to notice a little stain here. Uh, I guess when they were shipping it or packing and handling it, that's how I received it. So, obviously, I didn't want to go put in a replacement. I don't want to wait two more weeks or 10 days to get it. So, I'm okay with this. It was not wet when we received it. <laughs> it was just stained over here. So, that's the inside. Complete guide to the Bible uh, from... Barber Publications, and this came out, I think, in 2007, so there you go. Fine, so I'm going to, like, go into a close-up angle. Okay, so this is the close-up angle right now. Oops, don't want to knock my camera down. And the author, Stephen M. Miller, says that he spent a whole year working on this book with occasional workday breaks to look out the window, and when he was not bird-watching, goofing around, he did the opposite. He kept his head focused. All right, fine. That's just a little introductory. And he just wanted to write this book because he knew that many Christians out there, many believers probably just don't understand how to read the Word of God. And he's not saying that it's going to replace the Word of God. It's going to be a guide. And he wants people to treat this like uh, it, it kind of looks like a magazine, but treat the Bible with respect due to a 2000 year old book. And it explores different opinions of what the Bible is saying. And there are many more reasons why he wrote this book over here. So I just wanted to show this over here. Forget about the, the mark over here. Okay, and he uses different scripture references over here. He uses from the NIV, the KJV, New Living Translation. And for some reason, I don't know why, but he's using it from the Message Bible also too. But that's the author's preference, I guess. And he thanks a lot of people. So this is the index right here, the table of contents. It has the Old Testament. Uh, all the way from Genesis to Malachi. It has the Apocrypha. Those are the extra biblical reference books that are not considered part of biblical scriptural canon, if you understand what I mean. Uh, Catholic churches have the Apocrypha. The Ethiopian church has the Apocrypha. And the uh, Orthodox church has the Apocrypha. It's only the, the Protestant churches that don't have it. So the New Testament, all the way from Matthew to Revelation, he has an index and art resources so it's beautifully laid out it's mostly a beige color and it looks kind of like an old kind of manuscript like kind of book over here so just wanted to show you the old testament he says uh, some christians hate this title much as jews do they prefer the first testament many people think the old testament is out of date obviously not it is not out of date it is still very valid for the body of Christ today. And take Jesus' commandments to love our neighbors as ourselves. He quoted that from Leviticus 19.18, 19, a law written Moses' time. And here, 
uh, is an artistic rendition or an artistic portrait of Paul. We don't know how he looked, so we can only guess that's how he's. I'm just using my pen over here. So he talks about how he got the Old Testament, most of the old and memorable stories, like what we saw about Moses and Abraham, were passed along by word of mouth and from one generation to the other. And he goes on to record about that. In some books, he talks about which are part of the Apocrypha. And he comes into Genesis. So this is how Genesis looks over there. There you go. Um, there's a picture of a star being born over there. And when a perfectly good world goes bad. So you could find a little humor. Uh, I'm not saying it's a, a funny book, but a little humor over here together with uh, whatever the author is explaining about the background of how we got the Word of God, the Holy Bible, the Holy Scripture, and how it can be used as an amazing reference guide for us today. So this would be amazing to be used in Sunday school. And even as a homeschooling material, I use it a lot for my daughter's homeschooling scripture classes over here. And um, it's an invaluable aid over here. And he talks about how God creates the first couple, Adam and Eve. What is the main point of Genesis? This is the breakdown you'll find for every book over here. Let me just try to get that there. Oops. Okay. Let me just put that there. Uh, the main point is God created and sustains everything that exists. Though sin damaged God's creation and his relationship with humanity, God is at work in, in the world restoring both. So there's a main point. He's the author of Moses. Uh, most people say Moses did it, but the name of the author, we don't know. Jewish tradition says that it's Moses. That's why the first five books of the Bible are called the Book of Moses, the Pentateuch, or the Torah. And the date, well, we're not sure exactly when, during the time of Abraham's great-grandson. The location again so it's always going to be in context what is the main point the who the what the why the where the when that's what context means when you read the word of god it's very important the stories cover a lot of middle eastern territory of course and what is now syria turkey israel egypt iraq which is mesopotamia and iran which is no iran mesopotamia and iraq which is babylon back in those days and Everything is in the Middle East. So again, when people say, oh, Christianity is a white man's religion and uh, it came from the West and the Bible is, is a book from the West. <laughs> that is so stupid and lame. You know, I'm done with that argument. It is not. The origins are right there from the Middle East. Okay, so there's a lot of beginnings. That's what the author mentions. A lot of good beginnings and a lot of good reasons to call the book Genesis. That name comes from a Greek word. It means origin, birth, beginning. And this is a book full of beginnings. This the universe destroys the whole nature of evolution and Big Bang theory and all that garbage. Humanity, sin, civilization, and the nation of Israel, the Jewish nation. Okay. And then it goes into the next. We, I'm not going to go page by page, but just to talk about what's in the book over here. It talks about what's happening in day one, the Bible, books of out of order. Creation starts with the Bible in the book of Genesis, and it ends in Revelation. But there's a chronological pattern, which is a little bit different. Uh, most authors say that Job came way before Genesis, or likely comes after Genesis. I, I don't know. A lot of theologians are still debating on that. And it also answers one of the most important questions. Why are we here? That's the big question. Why are we here? And why in the world did God create human beings? Was he lonely? Did he have the same desire for children many adults today have? Did he want someone to love or to love him back? Well, guess what? We're never going to get the, the answer that we seek. We should just depend on the word of God over here. There are many reasons why God put human beings on this planet, but one of the reasons to take care of his creation, to tend and watch over it. So, one of them. And he talks about one rule. Too many, too many rules. Don't eat, don't do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. <laughs> and that's exactly what the Word of God is about. Yes. And forget about that stain over there. So it goes on to Genesis. It talks about Abraham. It gives some beautiful maps around here. It talks about Abraham's journey, possible journey all the way from Babylon, from Ur in the Mesopotamian and, and Persian region. All the way from there to Haran and to Canaan, which is modern day, present day Israel. And a lot of theories on the toasting of Sodom. <laughs> the toasting. Wow. Okay. <laughs> of why the Lord punished 
Sodom and Gomorrah for their despicable, perverse sin. Uh, many other people are still giving theories about how it even happened. And Jacob and Esau. So it covers a lot over here. It talks about the family tree of the biblical patriarchs. It talks about Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Esau. This is the blessing that we receive, not this. And then it talks about Jacob's sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. Again, it talks about Miss Beauty, Mrs. Beauty and Mrs. Beast. Okay, Jacob's two wives, Rachel and Leah. <laughs> we don't know. That's just an artistic rendition. We don't know how Rachel and Leah really looked. Maybe, maybe like that. We're not really concerned about the color of their skin or whatever a lot of people are trying to sell out there. Okay, even right here, selling little brother Joseph, and it comes down to, Daddy is my grandpa. Okay, yes, there's a lot of that going on in the Bible, so I'm going to leave it right there. And it talks about Joseph's family reunion, and then we are coming to the end of Genesis. And it goes into Exodus, again, an artistic rendition, where they say goodbye to the Egyptians, bye-bye, never going to see you again, freed from Egyptian slavery. The Israelites hurriedly pack everything they can carry and start their long journey home. So it goes on for many pages, and I just want to show you how many pages are there in this book. It goes on for 509 pages, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, together with the maps and the artistic illustration. So it's an invaluable guide to the Bible. Again, each book the author puts in the context about the main point, the writer, the date, and the location, which is Egypt, modern-day Egypt. So it goes on and on. And now we come to probably one of the most contentious points, and I'll probably just go over there. If I get it out, it's called the Apocrypha. Okay, so those are the books that come between Malachi and Matthew between what is considered the Old Testament and the New Testament, 400 year gap. A lot of people thought there was a time of silence. No, there, there was so much happening in the Middle East and around the world at that time for that 400 gap between the Old and the New Testament. So the Apocrypha are called extra books in Christian Bibles. It depends um, when the Protestants broke away from the Catholics during the Reformation period, they dropped the add-ons. They call them the add-ons. The the Orthodox Church still follows. So some of the books over here are called uh, Tobit. The other books, let's see if I can get that in focus over there. It's called Judith. Let me just bring my camera down a bit. Okay, there you go. It's called Judith. And the other books is called The Additions to Esther. And there's The Wisdom of Solomon. There's Sirach. There's Baruch, there's a letter of Jeremiah, there's a prayer of Azariah and the song of the three Jews. There's Susanna, Bell and the dragon is connected with um, the book of Daniel. Then there's the first Maccabees and the second Maccabees. That was very important to Jewish tradition today because they celebrated um, together with Purim when Esther and everybody else saw the deliverance of the Jewish people from the Persian threat. And the Maccabees was when uh, the Jewish people revolted against the Greeks. And that brought upon the downfall of the Greek uh, tyranny over the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. And the Romans came over. So they wanted independence from the Syrians and the Greeks at the same time. So there's the first book of so Maccabees, second book. There's the book called the Esdras. There's a prayer of Manasseh. There's Psalm 151. This is David's song after killing Goliath. Now, obviously, when we read our Protestant Bibles, no matter what translation or what transliteration we have, it just stops at Psalm 151. And there's 3rd Maccabees and 2nd Esdras and 4th Maccabees. So a lot of uh, churches, denomination, they follow that. Again, over here, there's a little breakdown. The Protestant church, we have it all the way till... 39 books of the Old Testament. There's no additions. The Catholic Church have it to first Esdras. Then the Orthodox and other Christian groups have the whole thing. So if you want to read it, you can go ahead and get copies of it. It is online. It is available online. And there are many sites where you do search for the Apocrypha. I personally, I do not feel that it's wrong to read the Apocrypha books because we got so many books out there written by different Christian authors and other men and women of God. And if you can read them, I'm sure you can read this, but keep in mind they are not included in the canon of what we call the Protestant Bible today. 
with 66 books. So if you want to read it as extra uh, books, I won't say it's extra biblical, but they are non-biblical, but extra books. <laughs> That's what I would say, extra books in the Christian Bibles, right? Yeah. But none of them are this is considered as canon or inspired, inspired text. So that's it. Then we come to the New Testament. The author starts with, by the time Jesus was born, around 64 BC, Jews had been waiting for at least six centuries for God to do something new. He said he would. And through the prophets in the Old Testament, the Lord sent the promised Messiah, even though he was not recognized. So it starts with Matthew. Again, there is a rendition, an artistic illustration here of what the wise men would have been. We're not, they're definitely not. It looks like they're three, but they could have been more. And what makes Matthew so special? Finally, the Messiah has come. And again, the main point of Matthew, the writer, the date, and the location. Very, very important. And it goes on. It talks about the world of Jesus and the wise men. Uh, a pregnant virgin, of course, very contentious point today. For many people, it talks about the Jewish gospel. Very, very important to understand the origins of our gospel. And it talks about when the wise men were looking at the stars, what exactly was going on in the heavenlies. And again, some artistic renditions over here and illustrations of the Bethlehem massacre when Herod orders the slaughter of boys below the age of two. Horrendous there. And there are also photographs here. They are not artistic illustrations. They are actual photographs of uh, where Jesus would have done the Sermon on the Mount. So the book goes on all the way to Revelation. Not Revelations, but Revelation. And it ends with a new heaven, new earth, and a new Eden. And it comes to the index. And after the index, there are art resources. And that's the end of the book. There you go. This is it again from Stephen M. Miller, The Complete Guide to the Bible, an illustrated, easy-to-follow reference covering both the Old and New Testament. And it's quite appropriate to put a picture up of the Christians being slaughtered in the Colosseum over there, never forgetting how we even ended up with the Holy Bible today. So there you go. That's it, The Complete Guide to the Bible. It's available on Amazon India. Uh, I don't know the price, uh, but if you do have the finances for it, I would definitely say go for it. So I've never seen the full in-depth review right here on YouTube. So that's why I wanted to do it to get to, to put an idea out there if you're interested so that you would have um, some kind of guide and an idea how this book looks and what you're going to get into it. And they are PDFs online, but it's nice to have a book like this in your hand with actual pages that you can turn it. Beautiful illustrations, lovely for Sunday school, lovely for young adults even older Christians, and lovely for homeschooling children. There you go. So have a blessed day ahead of you. The Lord watch over you. The Lord bless you and guide you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ Church. And um, I'll see you when I see you, and I have another big book review again. Shalom. God bless.